Welcome to Please. Trash Tuesday Late Night Edition. Does everyone want chicken tenders? <laughs> yes, 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 just yes, get yes, us. Yes, yeah, just you care. order. Get Whatever them what I got. I consume. Get them what I got. I'm getting five orders for all of us. Okay. Yes. So here's what's happening. Just to fill you guys in what you have missed since we last saw Carlos you. has turned violent. Carlos <laughs> is... <laughs> it is crazy. Carlos, I don't know if you remember the Storm Out episode, but we are about to have a, a redo. <laughs> I'm going to say this, Carlos. <laughs> Not great precision or aim or accuracy <laughs> thank god thank god he throws like well, a girl I trying to actually hit that oh you, you did hit her you hit you were dad. trying to hit us no, there's well, a... i was trying to hit annie and esther did get in the way yeah so that will <laughs> be a you, lawsuit esther. we'll settle out of court i hope esther thank you for taking the bullet for me you're welcome we know it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> i will she still was take trying to, credit she was trying to dive out of the way <laughs> And Carlos's aim was so bad it got her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like the story of my life. <laughs> what happened is we've been record we recorded an episode, right? And then we just kind of sat here because we're all f- losers with no plans on Saturday night. I have plans, <laughs> and, and <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we may as well roll because this is just a vi- there's a vibe. There's a vibe, and it did get violent. Though. The vibe is like no one wants to go home. It seems, which is that's sad. But no, I some- was waiting for y'all to leave <laughs> so you could start. <laughs> or stop chair when you're gone I thought you do you probably sniff our chairs <laughs> Honestly, I would sniff Kalila's chair I would wear your around my neck really How? But like oh, if the there con- was a way to sort of like crystallize it or put it inside like a capsule can like- I just tell you the best part is that Pete has like an actual family and it's staying for this <laughs> He was like, we got demonetized. Pete's like, this show is not going well. It's two <laughs> minutes in. My children are crying. They're hungry. They're asleep. They need me to tuck them in. I just, before we move forward, I need confirmation. And please don't be mad at me. I'm just. No, no, no. I got it. <laughs> is it ordered? Air one. Preparing your order. Good stuff is in the works. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. This is urgent. Literally this weekend, I'm going to be in San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. We added a second show in San Francisco. So if you couldn't get tickets the first time, they're there. I can't wait to see you guys. I love the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to drink so much coffee. You can get tickets at estheronice.com. And don't forget when you're doing all your holiday travel, listen to My Pleasure wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Hey, Soggies. Man, am I full. (laughs) Thanksgiving is over. Thank God. Um, You can see me in Michigan December 1st and also December 2nd and 3rd in Grand Rapids. I'll be in Las Vegas, Nevada at Wise Guys December 30th and 31st. Ring in the new year with me. It's going to be amazing. I'll be at Burbank for one night only in January 7th. And then you can also see me the end of January in Wisconsin. I will be in Florida in February and March, and I will be in Canada in April. Get your tickets at AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. Also, you guys, I'm so excited. Please uh, enjoy this show and then go over and see Annie Wood. It releases every Tuesday at noon Pacific time. It's been so fun and so amazing. I'm so glad for you guys to enjoy it. Just go to YouTube.com slash Annie Letterman. So we're hungry, but the food is on the way, and that's what's important. I put on lipstick because I was trying to fool the audience into thinking this was a different day. (laughs) It was so funny. She literally went and came back with lipstick. (laughs) And and he's like, yeah, so this is my attempt at um, a whole brand new wardrobe. I have no nothing underneath. I have a bad friend sweatshirt, which I love. This is so soft. Really? And you're wearing Kyle's vest. Kyle and I fucked. <laughs> Things got crazy. We fucked. I blew him and he liked it. Jesus. And he liked it. That's so sad. Don't it sounds to say like liked never it. given a blowjob. Yeah. And he liked it. The boy liked what I did to his he penis gave with my up. mouth. Have you ever been with a guy and him visibly not like what you're doing? Or not, yeah, like where you can tell he does not enjoying what you're doing? Well, the only example that comes to mind immediately is when I was having sex with a guy and I said, you're so hot and he didn't respond. <laughs> well, not, all, not everyone's a talker in bed. I get that. 
are you dude if if you said to a guy you're so hot and he didn't say you're hot too back that's the worst that sucks when are i you- hooked up with my my hot new zealand audience member you I was up like, with an audience member. He was the only time. This one time, he was so hot. Wait, can I? I got. I, gotta, I wish I had dance? his old. He used to send me these pictures. Like they were. He was just so hot. But then we like. He was so hot. You would die. He was an <laughs> island boy. He was so hot. But he. I was on stage and I couldn't believe it. Like I started doing crowd work with him. I was like, oh my god. Like I literally went like, oh my god, you're so hot. And um. I had gotten sunburned. I had like a like red lobster sunburn. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I saw him and his other friend was there who was hot. And I was like, oh my God. It was like the worst. Do you guys know what the worst part about having a sunburn is? And they were like, what? And I was like, um, when two guys from New Zealand are fucking in <laughs> and rubbing on it. It was just Wait. like crazy. I was like joking. Like I was yeah. going to fuck him because he was so hot. Like it was just. And then I started talking to him. I found he was from New Zealand. I was like, am I imagining this? And then. Um, I didn't want to hook up with him and then he kept, de- I talked about it, I think on the Ashley episode, but he like, he DM'd me and he was like, just, I'm I'm only in town for another night, please. Like, yes, yes. Let yes. me like sit on your face or let you oh. my face. And I was like, okay. But he, I was like, you're so, I kept being like, you're so hot, you're so hot. And he wouldn't like say it back. I was like, I'm just so sorry. You have to like, even though he came for me, but I was like, you have to equal it out like a little bit. And he was like, he had, a, he goes here, I have a compliment for you that I can't say this from many girls. He goes, you look really good naked. He's like, a lot of people don't look, he's like, you look better naked. <laughs> I think I'm better partially clothed. Fully naked, I'm not sure. Like, no, I'm saying. <laughs> I don't believe it. I, I Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Life show. She was about to. <laughs> I was about to. Would you ever have sex with two guys at once? Have no, you? I like made out with guys at the same time. Like we just were like fucked up in college. Highly recommend. But they, I told you the story. I think they started making eye contact. Like my one friend was like, I'm <laughs> yeah. done. And he started just doing the soundtrack. He was like, I'll do the music while we, I was like, this is my boyfriend. You're just going to watch me. My boyfriend bang. He's like, I'm not looking. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And he, so he had a crush on me. So he was trying to hook up with me. And then, so he was like, all right, I guess this is my shot. And then my boyfriend at the time was so gay. He was like a, that kind. And um, he just, let's just say, we'll call him a PA. Uh, <laughs> Talk, bitch. <laughs> Going. Do your job. Carlos, I, no, Carlos, you're a bad boy today. You're going to get away. Honestly, Carlos, it's, it's kind of working for me. I know we've been joking this whole time, but I would. It's getting. Mer- I'm seeing a wet spot. Look, look, my pussy's your gushing. Pussy's really out. Thank you. Do you not like my camel toe? I like your camel toe. I think I have a really pretty camel. Toe. I don't have as much like camel. <laughs> camel tits. <laughs> Wait, Carlos, dominate us. Come dominate on, dominate me, Daddy. Do it, <laughs> Daddy. I want another pony. <laughs> dominate me. <laughs> Y'all are gonna get your food soon. You'll be fine. Y'all are just on the edge right Why? now. Wait, we all, we all get our food. We're repulsed by him immediately. It's just that we're hungry. <laughs> and that's what it is, right? It's like a guy who's full of calm. Like he has all the poison in him. Once you extract the poison, he he's jerked a off normal twice human again. Today, at least. I, he has no comment. Did you get, okay, on last week's episode, which was three hours ago, did you actually get hard when Kalilah was touching I, it was you? Like, it was half chug. It was getting there because she was touching my, my balls and all that stuff. I can get oh, you there, daddy. Oh. She's gifted. She's a yeah. gifted. The but way like she fingers not- even herself. I'm like, I don't think I finger myself with as beautiful as a of a. I don't put like- fingers in myself um, when I masturbate. No, Unless it's like performative. If like there's a guy on FaceTime, like if Carlos calls me, then I'm like, yeah, I'll I'll put stuff inside me. What do you want in here? But besides that, if it's just me getting off by myself, it's like, no, it's two two seconds like zzz, and then. Done. But do you ever <laughs> try to do like, do you ever try to every once in a while I try to really like just to, like spoil myself, you know? I'll, I told you I used to masturbate on money, right? <laughs> when I was broke, I used to take my money with ones, okay? It was so sad. It was $1 bills, some quarters, some pennies. You get the little mark. Do you little, make it rain on yourself? Like, are you just- Make it hail. <laughs> Can I, pro- I'm gonna project an idea onto you that I have. It's like, you're like a, you're like a slut nurse. Like I'm, I'm so slutty. You're like a yes, sexual. No, this is not like why did you say it like we didn't realize? I saw you fingered Carlos's asshole. You're like a sexual nurse. Like there's something very medical about the way you approach it. Like it's very professional. Like she's read a textbook on it. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something about sex? I am. I'm very reluctant to have it with um a lot of people. But if I'm if I'm down for you, You're I'm telling you like. 
there that is the one place I know I will excel. Well, like, isn't it the worst when you fuck someone and you're not fully given? You don't yes, trust them fully, and you have sucks. to do like the like half in sex. Where That's like, nothing. That is it's the worst experience. They're like self conscious sex where you're not fully like right. And it, it also it's like for me it's like it's not even like about coming. There's so many ways that I find sex and like physical anything pleasurable. It's just nice to like make out and do whatever. It's all fun for me. I kind of want to go to like a tantra weekend too. Like I want to together. Like, do you want to? What is a tantra weekend? I don't know. You go. They, I don't know. I think they it's like scary because the people leading it usually try to fuck you. I think <laughs> I think it turns into like the whoa. I think so, too. But like, I don't know. It, this is so horrible. Whoa. My parents went to one. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Yeah. But I think it just like helps you get like you like center and I don't know, do the sting stuff. Will you look it up? Will you look up to see if there's a there is the Tantra Institute in Colorado where you can take Tantra speed date. Uh, you, yeah. you're like, are they gonna make me hike? <laughs> you hike before you come. That's that's you. You have to pay. Can is there like a synopsis? Come. Is there like a website that we can look at? Like what their pitch is for a tantric weekend? By the way, have you guys seen that? Right. What? I don't think it's a weekend. Like you're. They saying. do weekends. They do weekends. Classes, workshops. Should we have like a tantra instructor being yes. on the show? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, have you guys seen how Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian have been talking about edging? Yeah, I love edging. Edging. What is the can best. you? What is it? That's for not me, new. yeah, that's that's literally like. Well, of course, she just tried fucking weed for the first time. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm learning. I I didn't have edging fun. is getting so close to coming and then stopping yourself and then building. For me, that's what I understand edging to be. It's like, like when a guy is going down on me. And like, let's play it. Let's say, let's suppose like we're, we both plan to edge or we both agreed to. It's like right before we come, we stop. And then we do it again. And right before we come, we stop. Is this something yeah. that you did and with then, Bobby? Uh, no, Bobby was edging her for like six years. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby was a, was a, a fun, fun lover in the beginning when we were still really into each other. But it was fun. Bobby is like yeah. a, a fun, a fun, so fun to have sex a with. A fun fuck. A fun, fun fuck. I love a fun fuck. I think that that just means that you're fun. Uh, maybe, but he makes things a little interesting because he plays fun. along. Yeah. You fuck Bobby? What <laughs> is in life? You oh my God, can we all fuck Bobby? No. <laughs> oh no? Okay, sorry. I genuinely feel that I am the most repulsive. Like he looks at me and he feels like he's looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Danny DeVito drawing of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, so edging to me does not sound fun. That's like... It just sounds painful. You're a little impatient. Yeah. If painful. I'm allowed to say. Because yeah, because don't Okay. What do they say ed their edging is? No, my, that's what it is. Might that's what it, it is. Okay. I I but like isn't the thought of getting all jived up and then not going like horrible? That's kind of the tease of it. It's like prolonged because it's like you can just fucking come every day if you want right i think that's for me it, it's so easy for me not to brag but it is easy it's always been easy for me to come so oh, for me it, it took so long now it is but god damn did it take a long time do you have to think of really fucked up things <laughs> to come yeah no i could come in my <laughs> sleep not touching myself like i have wet dreams and i come in my sleep i have some wet dreams too right? yeah. what this is not normal. What? Like yeah. I, right now, staring at you like this, I can make myself come. <laughs> yeah, no. you can mentally do it. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. You want me to come? There's do a giggling situation. <laughs> Wait, fist yourself real quick. <laughs> Wait, do we do this save it for the live? Yeah. Kalila comes on demand. That's what edging is. <laughs> That's what edging is. She's learned to edge. Yeah. I Wait till the seventeenth. I can wait till November 17th. Tickets at moment.co slash trash Tuesday. We got to do no parents on this one. Yeah, no parents are invited. Can Sorry, we restrict guys. their like, IP address? Like, is there a way? Oh, I know how to do it. I just won't pay for them to get it. And they won't pay. And then <laughs> they won't go. <laughs> so. I got to go gambling with your dad. I don't know he has a problem, but I got to go with him. I really can. I, this is weird. I literally like look up to Carlos's dad. Like he's like a... What's he look like? Yeah. Mexican. He is That's so weird. He's yeah. like a hard worker and like smart as fuck. He just, I like love Carlos's dad. Like, is there a vibe? Like, <laughs> no, I'm just like kidding. You guys would have a vibe. Like, I feel like we'd be best friends. Have you not met 
No meeting? No, she's never met. No, I met your dad very briefly at your wedding. And he escaped. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> at your wedding? <laughs> that is so weird. Let's talk about Carlos's wedding tonight. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Wedding night. Oh, yeah. Were you, when you, did you have vows or? Um, I did have vows, yeah. I'm just breaking. Um, was it emotional, Esther? Did you believe it was really like a, a true love? Honestly, this is so sad, but like. I was, Carlos and I were so checked out from our friendship during that period of time mm -hmm. because she really like didn't let him have friends, kind of, I would say. Is that? She, no, that's very fair to say. She didn't, yeah, I think she was insecure and so she didn't like a lot of the girls I was friends with. But to also to not put it on her as like, you are the kind of guy that- You could put it on her. No, no, no. <laughs> you are the kind of guy I feel like- Fuck that bitch. When you get a girlfriend, you like- But I feel like that's like a everyone. younger thing. Yeah. Because I feel like- No, you don't do that now Were you, you like pussy people. whipped? Yeah, but it's more because I was like 26 and I was like, wow, a hot girl is into me. This is crazy. Like, because in your 20s, you're a fucking loser in LA because you don't have- Hair? <laughs> 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 Did you guys hear the? I beat? wish I had my gun. Wait, no. <laughs> this is actually this is a smart theory that you talk about a lot. You should share it. Just that when I was younger, I was like. But it applies to all guys in their twenties in LA. Yeah, when you're younger in LA, you're just like you're a fucking loser, basically, because everyone has more money than you. Everyone is like all like the forty year old guys in LA dress like they're your age when you're twenty six. They like skateboard in and steal your girl. <laughs> they just have all the nicer versions of the shit you have. So why wouldn't all the girls go towards them? Yeah, people are so fucking rich in LA. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah so when I met a girl who was like super hot and like cool, I was like just all about it because. It was like something you don't just get every day. Basically. How long were you together before you got married? Two years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I now Benji. Like I long. saw Benji the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all hung out with Benji, me and you. What, back in the day or now? Did we hang out together? No, me and you hung out with Benji at the comedy, at the comedy store, store like two yeah. weeks ago. He and I went, Benji, I'm, I go, I'm okay with this having happened, but I'm just curious if I did something. You did just, we were friends and then you just randomly unfollowed me. And he went, no, nah, just, and I go, okay, just curious. Cause I like to hear what people get mad at me about. Cause it's always something so funny that I like will usually stand by. It's usually a funny thing I said in public, <laughs> but I like, but I just was curious. And he was like, get offered up no info, but then followed me. So now we follow each other again. Wait, so he unfollowed you and years ago and he didn't tell you why? No, I just noticed that I want to go. Oh, I guess we're not friends. Like it wasn't like a because we weren't that close. We were really like close in the beginning. And then he we got in a fight with you. Yeah. Or we got in a fight with him. And then it was kind of <laughs> we got in a fight because of him. <laughs> yeah, he did do a fun thing. <laughs> but then so I just didn't really hang out with him either. But he I was actually with him when I drew that Danny DeVito drawing. Did I ever tell you that? No. I was at his apartment. I think it might have been the day that we surprised you. Wow. Now I'm upset. <laughs> now you're triggered. But um, I remember Benji going, don't draw. You're never going to make any money off of that. Like write jokes. And I was like, no, I feel like I'm onto a good drawing here. And then I've made so much money off of that. It's like <laughs> way more viral than any joke I've ever made. Isn't that funny? Wow. But was that? I just felt like I was like, I'll just ask him. But he didn't have a good answer. Have you ever asked someone that and gotten a good answer? <laughs> Um, well, like, I feel like, like when Akash came on, he mm. was like, oh, I didn't like you because of this. And then mm. with Jeremiah, like Jeremiah, I was always wondering why he didn't have me on stand up on the spot. I was like, how come you never had me on stand up on the spot? He goes, no, Annie, I had you on stand up on the spot. And you went, when he goes, I, you went up and then you went, does LA ever have stand up shows? Like, do we ever get to do what our job is? What is all these weird stuff? Like, I just like talk shit on his show to him. <laughs> And pretty much said I never wanted to do it. <laughs> and he's like, I just thought you didn't want to do it because you told me to my face you didn't want to do it. And I was like, oh. See, I'm the opposite. I've never told him I don't want to do it. And he's never asked me, but I don't want to do it. I like doing it now, though. And it's actually something I like to do. But it was when I was like, you remember when you needed spots so bad? Yeah. You're like, I have a new joke. I got to work this out. So I would be so disappointed when I would show up and it would be like, you know, it's actually a storytelling show. And I'm like, oh, I have a fucking new joke I want to try. Yes, I, I do like, remember that stage vibe. Time. Yeah. So that's what it was. But I like doing it now. Now it's fun. It's like, oh, okay. I can maybe come up with a new joke. Like in, in the early days, like when you're asked to do a show and then you show up and they're like, it's a theme. Yeah. And I'm like, like what? You can only do jokes about driving a car. You're like, oh my God, what the hell am I on the car show? <laughs>
Esther, I gotta say, I really like the uh, denim vest. It's look such a good you. look. Are you guys serious? No, dead no, serious. I'm not even kidding. Wow. You look like you built something for us today. <laughs> <laughs> what can you build? Um, do you have Legos or Duplos? Case. What are Duplos? I can a build case. a case yeah. against Annie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Duplos are like the really big versions of Legos that babies use so they don't choke on them. That's what I played with. <laughs> Yeah, are we still keeping chocobos away from you at this point? <laughs> no grapes, no shrimp. No she popcorn. almost ate olives. By the way, you guys missed this. It wasn't on camera. Carlos. <gasps> oh, yeah. This is so fun. Carlos brought the girls. Okay, not the guy. He left the guy alone. <laughs> brought the ladies two bags of olives. He goes, they look hungry. We I were so hungry girls. and and he was he so goes, nice. I have something for you. And I was like so insulted. I was like, I do I exist? I got no olives. Then they both start to open them. As Esther's realizing that they have been open for probably <laughs> all this time. Kalila pulls out one that looks like it like it looks like it has like tonsillitis. You know yes. when you look in and your strep. uvula has like yeah, it looked like strep throat. It was just white marks all over it. Well, I was like are they supposed to have white spots on them? Because she's new to olives. She could have very easily eaten that olive. No, that makes me gag. Oh, it smelled just fine. Yeah, she would have been fine. Wait. And we got air one on the way, girls. How far is it, though? Don't do your placate the girl's voice. <laughs> air one on the way, girls. <laughs> it's, he gets into this mode where he treats us like we're the Spice Girls and he's our manager. And I'm posh. Um, uh, it's being picked up by... Oh, that's like my cat's name. Oh. Well, is she bringing it here? Yeah. Oh my cat. God, if your cat walks in, that's the end of my life. That is the vibe. That's like, the start of my mushrooms? life. <laughs> are we on mushrooms? <laughs> like, is this mushrooms? Like, what is happening? We I definitely have a drug-induced, like, or a silliness-induced drug feeling. You I think that Pete put something in the vents oh. to brainwash us into doing a second episode today? Whoa, yes. we were like, because I do feel high. There's I carbon too. monoxide poisoning or something. Like, what is happening? Wait, now I just saw you something so funny about what Esther did earlier. What? We tried to talk about, like, the dates for things. And she goes, I'm not comfortable or ready to speak of the dates. And then we got her ass in the chair to do another episode. That is To crazy. go from that to this is kind of amazing. Well, I just meant I wasn't ready to talk about dates because I don't know my schedule. Calendar. But I did not expect that we would be doing a second episode <laughs> tonight. I'm very tired, but somehow this is fun. It's and I have fun. nothing better to do. We should shoot at night sometimes. It's a fun good vibe. I'm down. It's nighttime here in Los Angeles. I, I think, never know. I think who we are at night is completely different. Like for me, like this is my witching hour. Like if like if you catch me at midnight, I, we've all FaceTimed at midnight. This is like everything spills out, the good juicy stuff. The juicy, the juices spill. Let's see what we can Stop find. Being appropriate. Dig, dig, dig. I'll suck everyone's dick right now. <laughs> Carlos, pull it out, including yours, Pete. <laughs> Sorry. Pete is like, why are you doing this to me? Just please, God, don't do this to me. Of all the things to do, not this to me. <laughs> this is Kalila. I'll suck. This is <laughs> when <laughs> gets here. Look, I can't even tell the difference right now. She's the Chucky. Chucky. She's evil Chucky boy. Does not know what they're walking into Kalila, tonight. Kalila, we put this in your pussy. Oh my God, gladly. Light me up. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life does not come with a user manual. And it should because it's really hard and I need therapy, and I need a lot of help. And if it did, I'd like to be the author of it, because how rich would you be? <laughs> how rich would you be if you were the author of the owner's manual? But we don't have that, so we gotta go to therapy. You guys, navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, or a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. And honestly, it's like, it's cold out. The holidays are around the corner. Like this is a time where I need a little extra help. I I need to talk to someone who's trained and knows how to deal with a crazy person's feelings. Yeah, it's cuffing season. Some of us aren't cuffed. Oh, I'm not. She's not, she's uncuffed. I'm she needs uncuffed. therapy. And you're an uncuffed so gem. And some people are <laughs> overcuffed and they also need therapy. And some people are just right cuffed and you also need therapy. You just need therapy. As the world's go ahead, Esther. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched three million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available one hundred percent online. Plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. 
No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash trash Tuesday. Annie, how do you get your day started? I get my day started. I get up, all right? I give Randy a little tongue kiss. I put on his leash and then I go into the kitchen and I make some athletic greens. I shake them up. It's easy. I put a packet in or put in a scoop, put in my water, shake it up, take my dog for a walk and chug my salad for the day, baby. I'm back home and I've already had all my salad for the entire day. (laughs) With one delicious scoop of athletic greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of the things. It tastes so good too. It tastes great. It's easy. You don't have to chew. Do you not want to chew? I wake up with a sore jaw sometimes. I don't have to chew (laughs) and I've got all of my vitamins. (laughs) And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. And everybody loves it, okay? Athletic Greens have over 7,000 five-star reviews. They're recommended by professional athletes and trusted by leading health experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. And it just eliminates any kind of like guesswork um, about what I'm going to eat that day to meet my body's needs. I just have one scoop cold water, my matcha stir, and then that's it. I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. It's delicious. And right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Do you think that you'll use condoms now that you're back on the market? <laughs> Good question. Probably not. <laughs> I have. A- she said she's all in. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like my favorite kink is like telling them to come inside me and them me, me like preemptively telling them if I tell you to come inside me, resist and then really try to get my wow. way. Yeah, I'm really wow. fucked up. But no, that is a weird thing that I do. And I know like, you know, rain down on me, probably like rain really down shitty. in me, baby. But I think rain it's something in biological me. in me where I find it really hot to be it's cream pie. Of do. course. It's the so, greatest feeling. Of but all that's time. edging. So that's part of my edging thing. It's like I tell a guy we're going to edge. You are not absolutely not That's allowed to come it. inside me, but and I'm going to beg. beg for it oh my with God. all my might. I literally like pull him in and I try to like fight them. It's just keep and stay in there. And they're like bucking me off. Like that is our bucking her off. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm really strong. Right. So I just like clench my thighs. You know that one time I've had to take Julie several times. <laughs> the first time that Is I was that your Peloton instructor, so you can no, it's a it's a new contraceptive, a uh, morning after. It's a new like response? morning after pill that has like yeah, we I think we sponsor. are. Yeah, they were uh, they emailed us. Yeah, uh oh, <laughs> available at Walmart. Um, and so is your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. So the first time I had sex with a guy, I won't say who, but it was really embarrassing because I was like, oh, yeah, we don't need to use a condom. And then he was like, no, we do. Oh, my God. (laughs) When you tell a guy you're down and not use a condom and then they insist, it is there. It is like the saddest moment Girl, I know. It is so if I was sad. his mom, though, I'd be so proud. <laughs> How about, so okay, I was dating a guy. We broke up for like a week, okay? I didn't fuck anyone else, okay? We go to bang. We like, I was like, meet me at this this bar and let's fuck in the bathroom. I was like, horny. So we bet he brings a condom. He brings a condom. I was After crazy. one week. <laughs> after one week. I was like, you think I'm like hoeing that bad? No, he had, maybe he was hoeing that bad. Yeah, that has to be it, right? Yeah, I, can I tell you a really terrible so. story a guy told me? He was um, he was married to a woman with 10 years, had two kids with her, and um, he went to a different state to like just a, a boy strip somewhere. 
and he got chlamydia on that trip, sleeping with another woman. He came home, um, but he didn't know he had chlamydia yet, and he had sex with his wife. The next day, he had he started like burning, having the symptoms, and now he's like, oh shit, I already fucked my wife. So what he did is he he knew his wife was um, dealing with some like weight issues, and he said, here, here is this new pill, because he was a, 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 an instructor at the Wait, time. This he was, guy is a mastermind. <laughs> he was a... Uh, Jim, what do you call it? A trainer at that time. So he was like, oh, this new pill on the market. It's supposed to guarantee like rapid weight loss. And so he preyed on the fact that she really wanted to lose weight because she had just had children and it was antibiotics or the medication for chlamydia. He was like, you have to take it this twice a day for like this week. And it's supposed to like cause like rapid fat loss. That And it worked? It worked. Okay. That is kind of genius, but... I would never trust anyone, even if it was my own husband, to give me a medication. I didn't know exactly what it what was and what Carlos? it was for. If Carlos gave me the- Carlos gives you drugs and you take them. Pill. Oh, weight loss drugs? Yeah. yeah I guess I would call for this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, never mind. Check the pocket of your vest, baby girl. <laughs> got something in there for you. <laughs> um, um, wow. I, yeah. That's it. And this Did is I, like stories that I've always been a recipient of. And now I like- I think it's fucked with my idea of like men. Like I have a really hard time trusting. Like I am somebody that always checks phones and checks all of your gadgets. Well, I cannot that's the thing. Stop. It's like it is like I cannot egg. Stop. Like is it bad? Like is it bad? It's like I just give people their privacy just because like I want to get there. It's easier than you fucking. will. I want to get there, but when I first start dating them, like with Bobby, I stop. Like, I don't think it's in that five bad, years though. in. Right, I'm over feeling like it's that right. bad because. You do want to know, and some people have burned you, and it's it's okay. But I feel like, like I was with a friend of mine, and his wife was like looking at his phone and, like, to take a picture or whatever. And he was like, "Nice try trying to get my password from me." I'm like, "Your wife doesn't have your password." That to me is weird. Uh, uh, I agree. Yeah, Todd agree. can have can go through anything of mine ever same, at yeah. all times. Like I get off on being that close with my right, boyfriend, same. you know? Yes. So that's why like when I have found out when my guys, my boyfriends are cheating me, I'm like, I thought we were like together in this. Like it's like us together. Okay, so uh, let me pose a scenario for you. Let's suppose I start seeing a guy. I really like him. We really like each other. We're maybe not in an exclusive relationship yet, but we're getting there. We're getting to that point of feeling like, okay, like this is, I'm, we're going to put it out to the world that we're together, right? But um, so everything is there except the label. Should should I have access to his phone at that point? Like, let's say this has been going on a year. Wait, you're in a relationship? If you're just it's like a, to, I'm sorry, I, I, can to I, close it? I need to share something to really it? honest. I yeah. zoned out because I realized that the chicken tenders are coming and we don't have ketchup. <gasps> I feel like every order comes with a ketchup. No. No, it no. says it at the bottom of the order. Like it has like a little thing that says ketchup. Well, Pretty there's sure. no and did you worry click about it? it now. I don't know if I clicked it. That means that you didn't. You're fine, bitch. You don't need all that <laughs> fucking sauce. Do your job. No. Damn. Wait, is there, ke- Pete, do you guys have ketchup in the office? There is this underlying thing where Carlos thinks his job is harder than ours. And it's like so I really need sad. ketchup. I'm freaking out. You're not freaking out. What about your lipstick? Does it taste like ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> I'll squirt some try. pussy juice in your mouth. Yeah. Barbecue sauce. Carlos, can you tell us a ETA on your phone? We want to watch Kalila deep throat a chicken tender. Mm-hmm. And we want to do it now. Latest arrival by 8.05. What time is it? It's 7.36 right now. Oh, oh my God. God. What's the estimated arrival? <laughs> what? Oh. No, that's not acceptable. <laughs> it's not acceptable. Show me. What? Show me. I need to see it. No. Esther needs to change time with her own brain. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, do you know who's so cool? Not Carlos right now. He's hot bothered. I am like now the biggest fan of Julia Fox. Same. Yes. Same. Weren't we always? But I think we always were. Yes, but her TikToks have taken it to such a new level. Like she so just spits reality and facts and like honesty and I feel like most celebrities don't really do that. Well, they kind of can't because a lot of celebrities are in the like agreement, I'm going to keep secrets. and uh, Right. I, but wait, like, wait, what is that? Is that, that sounds like, yeah, co- tell, but not, that sounds like uh conspiracy theory. 
like you're getting giving me baby's blood vibes with that Wait, no, no i didn't mean it like that okay. but i just mean like it's like there's that you can't like like if you want to be in people have to trust that you're not going to be like spilling all their shit mm. but she's not spilling people's shit she's just like speaking out about how fucked up like having to be a single mom is and how like society doesn't help that or like capitalism is bad for people you or, don't know are you gonna keep going or yeah i had another one but now i can't remember kalila help <laughs> i think the last one she talked about is the difference between um democrats and republicans that was like yesterday's post but i think i will say this about julia fox i think i always liked her everyone wanted to paint her as this like one dimensional no, like awesome. arm piece of kanye but the moment i saw her i was like that that is a bad bitch also, she's had like, she's just an artist. I see her as like a full blown artist. She's yeah. like a combination of controlled and sloppy that I don't even know how to explain. Like she's so like sloppy and like, oh. a, and a, I mean, in a compliment, like I don't even like so like. Free. Free. Yeah. yeah. No, I think sloppy is a compliment actually. Yeah. I like it. Like she's not like, she's out there, but she doesn't seem self-conscious. Yeah. I was shocked she's only 32. She's cool. Yeah, she is really? very cool. Yeah. Is she really short? I feel like she's short. Older. Carlos. She does. Misogynist. No, it's not misogynist. <laughs> Excuse Carlos. I mean, <gasps> wait, what were you about to show us? Why didn't I like her? Dig deep. Why didn't you like her? Y'all ain't even know her. But misogyny make y'all choose sides with women and actually have to prove themselves as a cool girl before y'all sign off on them. Who the fuck is y'all? You know, then we could think about having a deeper conversation where y'all always feel like y'all have to not like somebody. Yes. Yes. Good that point. is so real and such a real part of our culture. And I feel like I know I'm certainly guilty of it. It's like a woman pops on the scene and it's just you instantly like judge them and not like just what she said. And it's like, why do we do that? Don't and you like is, grow out of it though? Like, Yeah. I think you just find your own peace and you're not so like anxious when you're like you I don't know you find like maybe it's like a thing people in their 20s do well also the way we all talk to each other about things where do you stand on this as if we have to immediately yeah. pick a side and my also mind changes like every day every day every day it's it's like it, staying neutral is is not fun or you know what I mean it's it's like that's another way you can edge is like to look at someone and to just see them with curiosity rather than judgment if you're first if, we, if you meet someone or see someone on the screen or anybody and your first instinct is to judge rather than be curious about them, like you have to really dig deep, like she's saying. Like, Wait, that's so interesting. To I want to like apply that to everyone. Just be curious. I think I am, but like I never have put it into words like that. Just be curious and not. Yeah. Who are you, what are you about? Di like get to know them. Like, you know, immediately like we're in this like we have to place them in a box in our head because uh, like the indecision of not knowing exactly where that person falls is like uncomfortable. But I will say, like you said, it's like you, you have to either like them or dislike them and you can't be neutral. But like most of the time, if people are speaking up and being interesting, it's not because they have a neutral take. So it's almost like just to be an, a voice in entertainment, you have to... You have to pick a side. But also it's like you can just observe someone picking a side and not like, I mean, I'm friends with people that drastically disagree with me on things. Like we take completely different stances on things and that doesn't make me like oh, not you, friends Oh, you consider with us friends? <laughs> but I think in, at, in this show at least, we've been really fair with Julia Fox. I think we've always I loved her. that bitch. Yeah, I no, we. Her. I feel like she's a like ideal trash tuesday universe a thousand yeah. i feel like she's a true slug like a true representation yeah. of like a slug i have to post that pete that one you made for me where i like spread my remember i wore green and then he put julia fox and he green screen julia fox into my underwear <laughs> <laughs> can i can i um talk about like green room secrets in yeah. comedy you know having been with bobby for as long as i was and going on the road with him or being at the comedy store it seems like the most favorite like pastime of comics is to who do we hate 
and let's talk shit about other comics. And mm-hmm. I every room, at, like without fail, if I'm in the green room, I, and I told Bobby this, I was like, doesn't it get tiring to just every, like it's a new comic you're talking to and we're, everyone's just shitting on each other about how much you hate this So person. fun when you find the same person, but... Yeah, it is. In the past. But isn't that like just a, such a common thing? Like that's all I ever heard. And like backstage or in the green green room was like people talking shit behind people's back. I can't believe this is coming up because I have such a thing to share that is so hard to talk about because it makes me so uncomfortable. I think I told you this yesterday, Carlos, but maybe I didn't because I think I was so embarrassed. Someone who is a fan of mine, someone who follows me, someone who like likes my posts and has responded to my stories like, oh, this is very friendly, accidentally <gasps> sent me my own story. Oh, that's so amazing. And sent a rude ass fucking comment about it. It's because you're doing well, baby. Can oh, I see I it? Love was it? it. Love this for you, Whoa. Esther. Tell me why. Because they're jealous. Love this you're doing you. well. I love when people great. fucking out themselves in this way because you don't even have to do any work. But the thing that is so weird about it is it's not even like a friend. It's like a fan. It's like, what are you? What? Why? Why are you my fan then? Like, what are you? It, it's like it's blowing my mind. It's like really disturbed me. I'll show you. I, I, and I and I wish I hadn't, but I just wrote back, yikes, because I was in such oh a, sh- I was like shaking. I was like, this is so weird. What did they write back? They didn't write back. I had the last word. Um, and it was yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I love being a fly in the wall, though, and listening to comics talk about each other because um, my favorite part was like Esther, say, for example, like this one girl would just go off kill me if my career becomes like if 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 you have to compare my career to Esther like just kill me and then i saw Esther start to soar like way yeah. past her oh, yeah. and that thing that voice like that. but Esther always was soaring past her that's yeah. the thing it's like that girl i know who you're talking about always bullied me. like literally just, would bully like, me so jealous and you and she like such a tryhard and you it just came to you. So, okay, it's so I, it was the, this story I posted of me standing over my two vibrators in my Columbine book. And for some reason, it says it's giving tragic, nerdy Victoria's Secret pink vibes, which I'm like, that's not even an insult. Cool. Yeah. But it's, it's obvious what it was. Like, it, it yeah, isn't, yeah. you know, it's very clear what happened here. Like, she's meant to send this to her friend to make fun of me. And it, you guys, like, why, why, why are you my fan? And like, I know it's not even like we're friends, like you have to deal with me. Like, I just like, I really, it sat with me all day. What? It doesn't sound bad. But you know what? It, it's a snarky, mean post. It's a. Sn- Are you sure? Let me see it again. Annie, it's giving tragic, it's giving tragic, nerdy Victoria's Secret pink vibes. And she sent the story. It's like. Are you sure she didn't mean to send that to you? Yes. Don't take this away from me. I, I'm the vi- I'm the victim. It doesn't. Maybe she's just. Kalila. Like, I I I'm partial. I think Annie. There's there's a. She didn't I'm, reply to my story. She sent the story yeah. and oh, said. Oh, I see what you're saying. She didn't reply. It's giving tragic, nerdy Victoria's Secret pink, which is lame now. Bye. Well, you know her better, so I I I don't know her. I just don't know. I what? I just thought it was gonna be so mean, and it was not that mean. It's Why not- does she try to be funny? But she sent the story. She didn't reply to it. That's yeah. But but maybe it's not. If she d- maybe well she maybe is if she hears this, she can clarify. clarify. But and maybe you're right. But Ends also up being a co-host, we have a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it did. I have to say, it made me reflect on myself, and it made me think like. Well, yeah, why do I ever, like, make fun of people's posts or shit? Like, why am I ever snarky about what other people do? Like, that is my fucking problem. Because I turned against this girl. I'm like, fuck you. And so then I had to, of course, look within. And it's like, why do we do this? Why do people in the green room just get together and talk shit about each other? It's like, you're literally talking about famous comedians who are living out their dreams, getting paid to do what they love. Why do they have to, like, 
take others down while they're doing it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I By the way, I'm I, not just a fly on the wall. Like, I fully participate. No, I think we're all like, guilty I, of it. Like, we all Listen, I am sure. good at shit talking. <laughs> but It why? is such a bummer when people tell other people. I'm like, you missed the cadence of the pun. <laughs> but I think for you, though, like, the shit talking is almost like, there, it's almost like uh, it's for sport and out of like there is like a goodness in it. Yeah, I'm and still then like friends no, with them. I and then there's shit talking that's like a different level. Of- I will say, okay, there was okay. So I had a friend of mine, one of my friend dumpies. Okay, was like, <laughs> wait, what's a friend dumpy? She dumped me, uh- <laughs> which is fine. It's and we're fine, but it's like. But she, like, when I met her, we were at a festival, and it was like we fell in love because we hated the same people, and we were like crying laughing like it was like this epic level of like i guess it's a way of having someone. fun we just were like laughing and having such a good time and then eventually our relationship crumbled because if we're shit talkers yeah right you know if that's I mean? the foundation exactly. of the friendship then it's not a good yeah but like prognosis but like you know like i can make we, like you just tease each other like if it's teasing it's fine it's like my dad teases your dad teases like yeah there is a light like and i think there is a there is an option for you to take that lighter than you're taking it but if you're taking it that way there's a lesson to learn in taking it that way too but i just when i heard it it's kind of like i don't know like that does that have to be an insult? What you said? Or I think you post a picture of Vibers and Columbine. <laughs> yeah, I I almost have to kind of oh. side with. I I don't want to take this away from you, Esther, but it doesn't but, seem as like like malicious. Like I thought it was going to be like this stupid bitch thinks she's right. something or whatever. Like that's like the <laughs> part of, like oh, they uh, strung together quite all the specific thing. Of a- and also <laughs> like and also. And also Victoria's Secret Pink, I guess, is bad. But also all those bad things become ironically cool and funny. Like maybe that's an inside joke with her friend or something. Yeah, no I guess. Clue. So I guess it's like we're I, we're all projecting our own thing onto it. And for me, I'm projecting onto it that that's like a snarky thing that like I would say maybe. or you And know. that hit you in a way at a certain time that maybe in a week would not hit you that way. That's too. also true. That's I mean, also that's true. Point. I do feel like it came in at a maybe at a low. So they want to like if people are hating us, we're doing great too. It's like there's not always like you can't have everyone. No, and that's true. What that's so true. No one hates on me. <laughs> I am a beloved figure on the internet. How dare you? <laughs> Don't take this away from me. Don't you fucking cut this out either. I am beloved. <laughs> I am beloved, and you guys fucking but know it. But you also it. are too. That's the thing. I'm fucking in in real life. Actually, I feel like you could be giving good advice right now on how the fuck you deal with that shit. Um, I don't know. Just cut your wrists nightly and <laughs> hope you bleed to death and never wake up. What do you think? <laughs> Emo Coco. <laughs> She's gonna write a poem about you. <gasps> about G- Jew. About Chew. <laughs> <laughs> about Jew. <laughs> No, I I don't. It makes me miserable. I hate it. I cry. It's, so it's sad, and I it hurts it so my much. feelings. But it's like, what, like, what can I do? And it's like I, you know better. Like, it's like, of course we know better to not let the comments bother us. But yeah. it's fucking crazy. No, it's so well, annoying. Even and it's not like you don't want to be like a victim of it because it's just like whatever. We're just like saying stuff on a fucking platform, and it's all yeah. nonsense. But it's like, and even like me so doing bad annoying. friends. It's like Bobby called and said, please, please, please. I'm like, I just got off a plane. I'm delirious. Can I sleep? I am not gonna make it please just do it it's like yeah i'm gonna do the favor it's like i didn't fucking say hey guys please have me on no, i know i already know it's gonna be like not well received but it's like no i'm gonna do this because you're not i'm not beholden to you i'm beholden to bobby like he's my friend yeah if he needs me i'm gonna say yes and i've said this before it's like so embarrassing to bobby the people that are like so defensive i'm like this 50 year old man <laughs> Like his friend, his ex-girlfriend, the amicable breakup, nothing bad happening, yeah. like needing to create all these things, but go back, try to put like their conspiracy theorists. But it's not about her and Bobby. It's about these people, what they're projecting and what someone did to them. It's like, that is what helps yeah. me lately. It's like, it's all our own thing that we put out there. And even Anne Hathaway recently did an interview where she was like, I won the Oscar and like, America hated me and I just had to like shut myself out and deal with it but she was like a punching bag and all this shit and I'm like whoa that's interesting like you could literally win an Oscar have all your dreams come true and like and then you're still secret pink (laughs) (laughs) and still deal with internet hate and but now she's beloved again do you know what I mean it's like but I think anyone this is what I tell myself lately it's like if 10 people like you 
10 people are going to hate you. So if you want 100 people to like you, Esther, 100 other people are going to hate you. And the more like the more exposure we all get, the more that part grows. The more they both grow. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's crazy. It's like our job is just to talk like Kalila has been doing this for so much longer than us, too. It's like what I tried to do for so long is to almost like uh, minimize myself on social media, post less. But I'm like, have your discourse about me, have it all. And I'm gonna outwardly say it hurts me, it makes me sad, but it's like, there's no point in pretending to be strong about it or pretending that it doesn't affect me. Yeah. It sucks, it sucks yeah, it's not so to be annoying. like. Mean thing, I get, it sucks. I'm, and you're like, wait, am I, this person they say I am? Cause like, it, it makes you like really second guess, like, like I think I have a good heart. I think that I'm like, generally like a solid human being. So it makes you kind of like second guess, like all of these There's things. There's like, what are you guys seeing? Like, what are you, but it's Well, how like- could it not? Because have you guys ever seen like those videos where they there's like two plants and they say bad things to one plant and they say good things to the other and like the good one. Between two ferns. <laughs> Zach- <laughs> and then Zach Galifianakis yeah. grows. <laughs> no, but it's crazy. Like yeah. the good, the one that gets the loving words like grows healthily and but, the other one doesn't. But and- the thing is we, this is like a weird exercise for us like that's specific in this thing. And Kalila is the one in the hot seat right now. But it's like yeah. for all of us, like we're not like immune to this happening no, to all of us. No, coming all for it. all of us. There's gonna be all of that for all but of us. But it's like, this is like an exercise for us to be like, we have to give ourselves the thing that we're not getting. You know, it's like we cannot control this external. There's no reason for this to be happening. You know, it's like it's nonsense. It's just something that caught a wave or whatever. And it's like so it's just we got to give ourselves the good things and not like measure ourselves up against like what these fucking ding dongs. Also, like I like to think like picture someone in your life who you know that is like awesome and killing it like some, or someone you look up to oh just as a happy person do you think that person is like on reddit like writing bad things yeah. about th- like no they're happy they're not doing it so the people who are doing it i think are really not doing well and that makes sense because our country is fucked up and so like it sucks that that's their coping mechanism but also maybe to them since they don't really know us and maybe they realize they don't know us are they're just having fun in the green room talking shit thinking that they're just having like a good time and not even like i have this guy that um right maybe they don't think it would ever affect well i have this guy that's been following me forever and i always make fun of him on the (laughs) don't bore me thing because he is so annoying like he will like he is so critical and annoying and so like demanding of things. And I remember his name because of how much he's annoyed me throughout my career. <laughs> and so on this interactive show I have, like it's like we're talking, like I'm talking to him directly. He goes, Who is it? Do I know him? Uh, Ron Phelps. Oh, he's, nice. a, he's like nice. He goes, I'm nobody. Why do you know me? He's like, how do you know me? I'm like, I'm like, I love you, Ron. Like I know it's all coming from, it's so fucking annoying. He's like, I can't believe you know me. He's like, this is so weird. Like he doesn't even know. Like he thinks he's speaking out into this void, you know? Yeah. But it's like, there's a different thing happening now because there's this whole subculture of like comedian haters, right? That are like, and they're getting like so many views and they're it's becoming their money to find things wrong with you specifically right <laughs> well, now. I, like, honestly, I mean, literally with you. And it's like- it's I, I, like, I put it this way. If you're- if your like video compilation of me like puts food on your table, like I'm okay with that. She gave, she let people steal her fucking equipment. Right. So you're if steal- like, all you're doing is stealing her If scuba like throwing my name scuba. and as is part of your algorithm, like feeds your family and gets you the meal that you want, fucking use it. Who gives a shit? It is like, kind of amazing how like you're pretty popular. No, you're profitable, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're a meal ticket for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, but I. But it is a weird thing because it's like, you weird. know, like you are like an evolved person. So, you know, to not like and I'm speaking for myself, too. It's like. I know better than yeah. to let comics comments like, but it, does. but it's still you're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it does. But you know what? You just you have two options. Well, like, you know, you could be a plant that dies or a plant that keeps growing. So you just kind of power through. Yeah, and, you know, and it's just, just take it day by day. You know what sucks? Like with all of like any scandal or anything we've had or whatever. Like sometimes people will bring those things up to me Mm -hmm. on the road and stuff. But since you don't really go on the road that much, like you don't get like the love, like everyone's always like, tell Esther and Kalila I love them. Like tell Kalila, no one has ever in a million years said a negative thing about you to me. So it's like, it's just like, 
you don't see it like you're at a disadvantage because you don't than us i think because you don't get to like really really meet them that much right that's right true. that's true so should we go on the road yes yeah duh bitch i mean are well, let's do a comedy store main room or something let's definitely year. do that let's do a real fucking show yeah we could okay sell out. it'd be easy yeah let's do it everyone asks me all the time i go i don't know we all these all of us there's three bitches we got like fucking so many different schedules i'm like esther's like in a movie oh. she's in the ocean food is here air one break air one break <laughs> we're back from air one break oh we're, we're so better we're very mad oh i feel like a food coma is coming over me no i feel good i feel, I feel great give me some fucking liquid death recently i literally said i think i said this to you even like I'm. I don't want to move forward anymore. I want to go backward. <laughs> Baby, you're on a good train right now. You want to move forward. I want to go to the basement. Esther, no, we so want to get no Esther. We want marble countertops. Okay, we want a big. We want man. But I right? can just buy those sticky plastic things you put over the f and make fake mount marble countertops and be really happy. You're just gonna be richer than you're. You want, I guess. Yeah. It's happening. It's always been happening. I want to go to the basement. I'm like, I never got to have that era of my life where I just smoked weed in my parents' basement. And I feel like most people get that. Why don't you build a basement in your beautiful... Exactly. I think your mansion. entire home, your the first home you build from scratch will be just a basement, like an entire basement. I love how you guys it. are manifesting that, but... It's not manifesting it. It's like happening. It's just like, it's a role. It doesn't stop. We'll even make you a bed inside like a giant dog crate. I just uh, great for Jacob. Oh my God, uh, someone brought me a Jacob bracelet for you. Uh, <laughs> it's wait, so cute, I, you guys. Keep making us bracelets. It's so adorable. Do we have Kleenexes in the studio yeah. Yeah. for the Jewish oh, people? Oh, I, my, whoever made um, that bracelet for me that said molested, yeah. I need another one because mine broke off. Um, it yeah. ripped off and while I was out somewhere and I didn't notice it and I lost it. Can someone make me another molested yes. bracelet? Yes, okay. Please? What? Okay. Are we selling What's bracelets name, Amy? soon? Wait, hold on. I'll find out her. Yeah, I need it. I did tell that when she made that. I was like, I do want to let you know that we did have this idea already. I, don't want to I, I was back. seriously thinking today, like, will there ever be a day where I fucking get in person face to face with my high school ex? This is so crazy. You're still it thinking is. about this. Like, Imagine if you let this go, what could come in its place? What beautiful things could come in its place? If you just let this go. But it's not taking up so much room that it would. You're thinking about it. But like, what does he look like now? Have you checked? She doesn't know. If she's. Born. I can't really talk about what he looks like without like being offensive. Oh, so you okay? He, looks he Jewish. Carlos, you are literally anti-Semitic, and you're energizing all of anti-Semitism. If I can do that and rise up people, that says a lot about me, and that's a good. Sarah thing. Silverman's coming for you, Carlos. No, seriously, you're going to the fucking hall. You know what? No, you know what? I'm gonna tell. Great, this is great. Look Guess at her what? Jewish hands. Right. No, no, I went to the Holocaust Museum when I was a kid. That yeah, doesn't you, wait, that no, doesn't matter. No, no, no. Okay. You, can't talk you about cheered. It. You cheered. <laughs> I'm Jewish. I'm quarter Jew. Okay. That so I there's the one of the world class Holocaust museums. It happens to be in Skokie, Illinois, where I'm from. Oh we have the God. highest population of Jewish people. Did you people. escape from the museum? <laughs> <laughs> And they have this new program, which she I know you know about. I thought that's what you meant by your ex-boyfriend if you were going to be offensive. No, it's because he's very overweight. Oh. Okay, so. We all get sad. So <laughs> The worst thing it can be. They have this program that like to, in order to carry on the stories of people who survived the Holocaust. You have to eat as much as you can. It's they have contest. holograms of Holocaust survivors. That's a lot. Yeah, my mm. mom told me about this the other day. I know, so I have seen it. And you were like, mom, just put money in my account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your silly Jew story. Yeah, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> And so I got to go and watch this and watch this woman tell this story. And she talked a lot about how when they were first freed from it, and survived. Who freed them? Abraham Lincoln. Queen Esther? No, that was the other Jewish people. Esther King. <laughs> but um, they didn't talk about the Holocaust. They never spoke about it because mm. it was this traumatic thing. Like, no, it's not like you. So they have a lot in common with Mel Gibson. <laughs> it's not like you. They came... deny the Holocaust. <laughs> it's not like you show up to America free and you're like, guess what happened? It's like you just fucking survive. Yeah. 
And it wasn't until the KKK decided to do a rally, um, like a famous march in Skokie. And they ch- the KKK chose Skokie because Skokie had the highest uh, population of Jewish people and Holocaust survivors. And it was then when all the people who had survived the Holocaust were like, what? Like got scared and were like, oh, we can't stay quiet. We have to speak up and tell our story. And that's when like, that's how they started to speak up and tell. So because you said something so fucking mean about Jewish people, now I'm going to tell you a really sad thing. So this woman told a story about- When I say mean about Jewish people- Oh, do not play this game. (laughs) You said, I don't want to say something offensive about my ex-boyfriend. And I thought, oh, is it because he looks super Jewish? Okay, so you were making a joke. No, but I wasn't- No, but then you- No, if we play back the tapes, then I was like, you're in- What? Help me. So this woman said that she was- Her and her mother were taken away to- the like trains and they were in a line and they said adults go here children go here and the mother stayed with her daughter in the line and the daughter said mom no you're supposed to go in that line oh my god Mm. she's crying now making me feel bad and her mom was sent to death that's not the way you take this you just feel the feeling and don't make it about yourself and like i'm not mad at you i'm just saying like these are the fucking stories and I know there's horrible things going on in Iran and everywhere and fucking I just learned about North Korea like and I know that's the what happened uh, however many years ago and with the Holocaust isn't the worst problem in the world right now but it is still really serious and like when I hear that story when I think about how Jewish cemeteries are vandalized like where my grandparents are buried like people go to the cemetery and spray paint kike and Jewish like, Nazi symbols it's like no, Kanye, you can't fucking say that shit because look what happened. And like, again, I don't, that's that. There, now I cry. So Kanye, maybe we lost your, your subscri- subscription, but we're okay with that. You can unsub. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking directly to Kanye. Look, he's here. <laughs> on, on that note, <laughs> on, on that note, I want to add to, well, yes, on that note, <laughs> um, I just I didn't just learn about um, nuclear testing in the Marshall Islands. Obviously, like I watched a documentary mm-hmm. and I was much younger. Um, the U.S. tested a lot of like nuclear bombs in the Marshall Islands, and a lot of the population developed these like horrible deformities. They have these thing called the some of these babies were called like jellyfish babies because they were literally like they were so. Is that why your neck is Annie? Annie, <laughs> like and it's so sad. But that is the history of the word bikini. Like the the bikini that we wear was named after the bombing of the bikini atoll in the Marshall Islands and for a way for the U.S. to sort of sell this idea that the the bombings were necessary they put women in these two pieces like they were like using sex to sell do you guys know you don't know about the bombings in one piece island right (laughs) (laughs) so is bikini canceled speedo island is uh (laughs) bikini kill yeah I think bikini kill might have been might have been. That might have been what they were saying. Yeah, right? I think so. She wants me to be like her. Do you remember Bikini, Bikini Kill? Bikini Kill is No, it's that. So uh, good. Bikini Kill is a band, a girl band that's so good. She wants me to be like her. Give us sad history, Annie. Yeah, your turn. Sad history. You were molested. Let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was so over it. Once I heard, once I started doing Don't Bore Me, I realized my molestation is pretty light. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, you know what? I would say mine is pretty light. Anytime I open the door for people to tell me their stories, I'm like, oh, didn't have it as bad. Holy shit. I'm okay. Yeah. And then, you know what? Also, I was I was watching an Eckhart Tolle, um, or Tolle, I don't know how you say it, um, a video where he was talking about not having trauma is a trauma for people. People like not having anything bad happen to them becomes the thing that happened to them. That's Wait. with George Kimmel. That's what I always say about him. Something happened to him. You don't think so? Nothing happened to him. <laughs> Nothing happened to him. So much the haircut so that <laughs> when he had he was assaulted by a barber, <laughs> like I think that he is like a perfect example of someone that if it wasn't for the podcast world, I would probably never connect with because he is he just lived the way he describes his childhood was just so like cherished. But wasn't he in like a religious cult? But he loved it. <laughs> so they granted him a certain level Lame. of freedom after but he- fear of god is scary is that a trauma and it's i don't think he sees it that way so when he had any like a little bit of freedom he was like i'm gonna try cocaine, i'm gonna to ruin india, this. do I'm all gonna- the drugs 
I'm going to take over this world. What podcast? Are <laughs> But that's exactly it. It's like when nuclear I, bombs and podcasts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast Island. Podcast Island. Not having a trauma is a trauma. Everyone's all fucked up, but it's all good. Oh, yeah. Um, sad tale. A sad tale. Tell us a saddest tale. You I've cried about. on the show. I've told sad tales and cried. Yeah. Um, I barely cried. I don't cry a lot. No, then someone tried to steal the thunder. Up with a bikini. Yep. No, 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 oh, no, oh, no. Him, not you. She's he goes. Actor. You're trying to make. She me... can cry on demand. I will. Oh my god, he's <laughs> he's, he's calling me a crisis you. actor. <laughs> <laughs> She's Hog, David Hog. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I did when I was in a death and dying class. I don't know if I what? did this. I was, took a death and dying class in college. That's like why I, the first time I moved back to Philly, <laughs> I took a death and dying class because I, and I moved back to Philly because I was like, oh my God, I want to be near my parents. I started to freak out. It was actually a really, I almost went into gerontology because of it and wanted to do hospice work and stuff. It was really like a cool class. Whoa. But, um, what did you learn? I don't fucking remember. <laughs> but, um, But it was good. It was beautiful. It was just like different like cultures, how they look at death and stuff. But so um, and then we looked at like the different like the denial of death, blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay. Anyway, there was a girl in my class. We went around the first day and we were talking about like our experiences with death and like what, you know, how it's touched us. And this girl, I swear she was last. Everyone like said their thing. My grandma, my dog you know oh my like a sibling or something you know like oh my god it's so bad my cousin like oh this girl goes all right i'm just gonna come out with it i went to columbine and i was sick that day and all my like three of my friends died oh shit are you serious Isn't that crazy this was in your class yeah and you know what she was wearing Victoria's Secret pink. Oh, fuck you <laughs> <laughs> no but that really happened is that crazy wait That's that is insane. is that insane She was sick that day. She missed that day. So she has like survivor's Survivor guilt. guilt. And her friends died. Two of her friends died or three. Oh, wow. I don't remember exactly. But isn't that wild? Did she talk more about like, did you get? Not really. I mean, nobody really wanted to like pry. It's yeah. like, you know, when you, I always feel like, especially with people who are coming with it, it's like whatever they want to share. I'm like honored that they're like willing to like open up, but I never want to push or pry. That reminds me of this uh, Moth podcast episode that I just listened to. Um, oh, couldn't you imagine being like that I was on and she like forgot to tell us? <laughs> I was on the moth. Um, no, but this this man recounts a story about his gay awakening, basically. Um, he was, uh, I think, an elementary or like a middle, uh, he was a teacher. And um, he was, he hadn't come out to anybody yet, but he called like a hotline and he was like, he was like, I. Jerking off. <laughs> he didn't know where he was. Like, just, he was just like in a crisis in his life. Yeah. He's like, I like, you know, tell me where the closest gay bar is. And the person like actually gave him like this place to go. Carlos, But, where is the closest gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Milwaukee somewhere. He was like, oh, go to like Celavi or whatever. So he goes to this bar and this gay bar. And next to him is this man who he remembers so vividly as just being like smelling so deliciously like chocolate. He was like, gay. and then um, he. Are you saying that's gay? <laughs> Doesn't that sounds good to me? It's it's a well. thrill for him <laughs> to be in this place for the first time. He sees this man who is so attractive to him. He looks at he head to toes him. He's like, I like the way he's. I like his style. I like his smell. I like his boots. And he was like, maybe if I sort of like mirror this and dress like this. You know, I can you know kind of come into myself a little bit more. Come into the gay man that I am. Um, and so on his way out, um, um, someone talks to him. He, he like mentioned the, the hot guy. He was like, oh, like, who's he? Like, he's my type. And the guy's like, oh yeah, he's E.T. He's like, what's E.T.? He goes, that's everyone's type. So this man that smelled like chocolate that he just put on this pedestal was everyone's type. He was just hot, hot, hot. <clears throat> Fast forward or after that experience, he starts buying the same boots. He starts really mirroring this man because he's like this is the gay guy i want to be it's like the celines right <laughs> with my celines as well yes and so um then one day he's in class and he turns on the news for his class to watch and um there is um he sees a man that's familiar to him on screen and he was like he tells his whole class he's like oh my god i know that guy followed by shots of police bringing down like vats and barrels 
down the stairs and then followed up by <laughs> well, it's the, Milwaukee, so yeah. Yeah, the person basically saying like the person on the screen was Jeffrey Dahmer and he has just been caught for dismembering and killing and eating and preserving. Wait. Because that is why I wear those Dahmer glasses. <laughs> Wait, so Jeffrey Dahmer was like a hot guy? I so, I mean, to this man, yeah. He got all those guys to go home with him. But you just said he was everyone's type. Like That's that means what the, he's- Yeah, I think so. That is freaky. And the reason he smelled like chocolate yeah. is because he was working at a chocolate factory, like a chocolate plant or something like that. Okay, so he's like everyone's hours dream. Of the day. Yeah. Have you been to Buffalo, by the way? They have a Cheerio factory near the Buffalo Helium. No. And it smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast and credits. <laughs> <laughs> but I find it interesting that you can look up to someone in that way and be like, this is who I want to be. And that person be like one of the most famous serial killers, you know? Because image is... Mm -hmm. So like you could be anything inside whatever image you are. Like it doesn't matter. Like that's so interesting. Yeah. That was good that we'd all watched the Dahmer thing and like knew about it. And you, you got us still. Except you when I said Rachel's. Milwaukee, you got it. Before. I was about to go like, I was about, when you said Milwaukee, I was about to do an Annie interruption and be like, uh, are we done with Milwaukee? These murder. I'm like, Milwaukee, what's going on with you guys? An Annie interruption. <laughs> <laughs> Derail complete. <laughs> but that was really, and he told the story really, really well. The buildup was so good. There's what is the moth? I've never heard of that. There's people telling really? stories. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's really great. That's weird to not know what it is. Yeah. I would imagine you'd be the It's first like Risk thing. and Moth or like storytelling shows. Mm -hmm. No. My boyfriend once told me, my ex-boyfriend, I went back to visit my ex-boyfriend once. I had decided that um, I had gone through a breakup and then um, I was really like longing for love. I was kind of like, oh, where do, where's my place, whatever. And my friend was like, we just started talking about our exes and she was like, well, maybe that one guy is like, was always supposed to be your guy. It was this guy in college that I dated who I really loved very much. My family loved him. And I had always kind of like put him on this pedestal. And I went back um, to New Mexico and I like was like ready to like be with him, you know? And it's so crazy. Like, it's just so out of nowhere. But in my head, it's like, you know, my friend and I have like set up this thing where like this is my person and I have to go get him. And we go and I, um, <laughs> we go and we're like at a nightclub or something. I don't remember what we were doing, but it was like, I was, he was like, oh, I got to go get my weed for my car. And I was like, oh, let me come with you. I was like just trying to get him alone, you know? And then we like, get to his car and we're like sitting in his car and smoking weed and like talking. And this was like 15 years after we had dated, you know? And I'm like, I don't know if I like leaned in for a kiss or something. And he was just like, what are you doing? He was like, hi, nice to meet you. Like, haven't seen you in a while, girl. Like, even though we had like stayed friends, but not like yeah. that close. But he was just like, whoa, what the hell? And um, and in my head, I was like, come on, it's like me. And he's like, yeah, but it's you. But also it's like been so long, you know? And in my head, I was like, we're gonna have this thing, you know? And he, um. He told me two stories. Like we hung out for the weekend, and we did end up we did end up um, banging, and it was like kind of sweet and like a close. No kissing stuff. though. <laughs> no, we kissed. The whole thing was like kind of weird because it, we could have not done it, but it was like I just I didn't bang it. It was like right after that stuff had happened to me in high school. So when I first started dating him, I was a freshman, so I didn't fuck him because I was like really traumatized by the the court stuff with my teacher. So I like really wanted to fuck him because it was like, and I was like so confident in my body now. And like, I was just like, oh, it'll be like, you know, this thing that we never did or whatever. I bet he really liked you. We loved each other. Yeah. No, I mean, like even then, like, I, I think that's actually a good sign when someone wants to slow down. And I really appreciate that out of a guy. Like there was a guy who's back, back then who was really, really, really sweet, very attractive, very kind. I wanted to jump his bones immediately. But the first thing he said to me was like, hey, I really like you. Like, can we take this slow? And I could not have like appreciated it more. Yeah. He's like, I'm really, I don't want to have like sex immediately. Like, he, I just like loved it. I love the safety of him saying that. I yeah. love the safety that there was no rush or awkwardness. I really, really 
liked it. It made me it made me want to jump his bones even more. Yeah, but did you? Because I did. No, I didn't. I really was just like. I wish I had been more respectful of the time thing because I I felt like a rush because I was like, I just knew he was going to like end up with. I was like, I just feel like this is like our last shot. Like, because he was his whole point was like, he's like, look, I'm seeing this girl. We're not exclusive. I'm not. She's not my person. You know, that sounds so familiar. Yeah. He's like, she's not my person. But he's like, I just feel like it's not like the timing is not good. Like, he's just like, it just like doesn't feel right right now. And I was like, come on. Like, it's like. We just like loved each other so much, mm -hmm. you know? So I was just like, come on. And he was like, I know. And then we eventually did end up, everything like fell into place. Cause he was like, I was just so proud of him. You know, like it's 15 years later and he has like, he had built this house. He like was showing me around. He built this like, this um, like sun, like a star looking room. Like it's like, it was, had like a glass ceiling and we're like sitting in this place he built. It was like so mm -hmm. hot. And like, he was one like of those people notebook. that- it was very much like the notebook, but it was also like he like represented something so special for me because he really like healed a lot of my like hurt from high school and that thing that happened. And he was always so like loving and supportive of my artwork and stuff like he just was like a good person for me. And I always kind of liked the way I reflected off of him. You know, it always made me feel really good. So we're like in this room and we're like looking up at the stars and I'm like, are we really not going to fucking bang? Like when you did finally bang, like did it live up? It was like good and special, but then he was like really kind of like, he was like a little ghosty afterwards. It kind of hurt my feelings, but I also understand that it was like, I had to look at it from his perspective. Like he was just living his life and I just pop back in like, hey, let's like pick up where we left off 15 years ago. And I really like, I said to him, I was like, look, I like, I understand that you like feel like this isn't the right time. I was like, but you are going to get married and have kids. Like you are a catch. You are like, this is like, I just don't, I feel like this is like our only shot. And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know? Wow. And so it was like, you know, and then, but he told me two things. The reason I thought about this and it was nice and it was like romantic and stuff, but it was like, I was like, I wanted it to be something and, but it couldn't be that thing. Like there was actually not a reality of it, you know? And so he said two things to me. It was like two moth. One was the moth story and one was an article he had read, but he was like telling me the story about the, uh, from the moth. And it was about this this couple that had dated, I think they were had an age difference or something and they had dated and maybe like lived overseas together. Something like where like there was a couple that had dated and um, it was like the girl had red hair and I might, I'm going to totally be butchering this, but I can get the gist of the story. And they ended up like breaking up because they loved each other, but they broke up because like the timing wasn't right or whatever. And then they went on their way. And then, um, and then he was like, they like ran into each other again and this like little redheaded girl like came up and was like, was like, hey, are you, oh, the woman had let, had, had broken up with the guy to like let him free because he was like too young. Todd, not gonna happen. Um, not happening. And like let him go. She's like, it's just not the right timing. Like this person needs to yeah. continue living his life. So then she, he runs into her again or she runs into him again and he's like married with a kid and the little girl comes up and looks just like his daughter comes up to her looking and looks just like the mom or something and goes like called her him her his angel or something there was like something where it was like the kid was thanking the woman for like letting this guy go because like the kid would never have been born but he's like telling me these stories that are like take a hint bitch you know that are like hey let's like let this go you know and then so that was like cute that was like a cute story i was like yeah. okay that's fine and then also he told me this story about he read on a in a um Cheryl Strahan has a I think I might have talked about it on here but like with uh she had a a column where you would ask her questions she would give you advice and these people were asking whether or not they should have kids and she was talking about ghost ships and it's like in your life you cast all these ghost ship, ghost ships off like whether you want to like um when you make a, a decision in your life, you cast off the other decisions ghost ship. And she's like, you can admire that. Like if you have kids, you have to cast off the ghost ship of you and your husband, just like being able to travel all the time and not having kids and having that life. And you can admire that ghost ship from afar, but you can never live that. It's never gonna be yours. Mm -hmm. And he's like telling me this thing. And I was like, oh, I feel like, like you're kind of like one of my ghost ships. And he's like, yeah. Duh. And he was like, cause he was like, do you think you could ever like live here and be with me? And I was like, no. And then I realized I was like asking him to like promise me this thing that like could never happen. Sometimes th you really do need that though. It's like, you really kind of have to let the record play all the way till the end. It's like, it's like, I've been in those situations where it's like, you know, the circumstances are never going to align. Like it's, that, that it's a ghost ship, mm -hmm. like you said. 
but you have to almost like see it through or else you're gonna like beat yourself up yeah Oops. well i always had this i had just put him on this pedestal and him not calling me back that much afterwards was like good because i did get a little mad at him and a little butt hurt even though i now completely forgive it and understand it and we're friends and we're all good but it was like it was just so like i needed to like kind of have my heart broken by him yeah like a final right right like to just be like okay this is like the it's a way to like tie a loose a, a loose end maybe you didn't know it was a loose end but maybe it just was but it, it needed to happen because i was like measuring him up against everyone and it wasn't real it was like this is like what he was saying he's like hello nice to meet you again like what's going on there's this song by sir it's called you can't save me and there's this line that always gets to me and i want to know if you guys agree with this it's um um wrong place wrong time with the right one like, could someone be truly like the right one, which is all the wrong circumstances around you? No. Or is the right one going to make it the right time? Because now I have my Todd. It's like, do you know what I mean? It's like, and he has kids. He's like married with kids or whatever now. And like, like, I believe that, Esther, that could that happen? I'm just that stuck on that no it. guy has ever asked me to take it slow. <laughs> Unless you count asking, insisting on wearing a condom. <laughs> but... <laughs> no one's ever said wait 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 let's uh, let's slow down no yeah because they have fetishes for little Ooh, baby girls yeah, maybe no but i do girls. think that's such a beautiful story and i definitely agree that there's like right person wrong place wrong time because how could it not be true but then maybe but there could be right people for you in that moment like like for me after i had like had my sexual assault and stuff he was like the right person for me he was like the perfect thing and i think i like held to him so tightly because of that and i had this whole story playing in my head that i hadn't included him in you know like i didn't clue and he was like even saying he was like could you be here like with me and i'm like no and it's like so why are you even doing this it's like it's like i was like chasing this unrequited part yeah but so okay so if she, if she's saying you could be the right person wrong time wrong place whatever like he could he could he applies for me i would say he would be that like he was the right person but it was the wrong place in the wrong time it's like you are destined for stardom and for being a comedian mm -hmm. and pursuing mm -hmm. your passion like sure you could have not cho you could have chosen him but you didn't would have been yeah and like you could have and maybe it would have been a thing but it's like that wasn't the right this is the right way you know but then it's like yeah and it's like but then it's the right people for you at that. Maybe it was the right time, you know? It's like it was right because it got me to what I needed. You're to saying get. like it was, it played out perfectly for you. I think everything plays out perfectly. This is what I'm truly afraid of, meeting someone absolutely wonderful right now. Like, because I'm so just like, but you would uh, be ready pieces. then if it would. But it would. But maybe you wouldn't be. Yeah, I agree. It's been, like, yeah, you can, I'm a little you fractured can, still, and it's like I'm so afraid of like squandering something so great, like. Imagine if I'm if, imagine if I was just like this is like an amazing person I could really foresee a life but I'm like just I feel like I've regressed a lot and like maybe I'm not uh, ready to be in this like amazing relationship with someone amazing like I'm I I want it's almost like I want to intentionally meet like shitty people right now. But you're anticipating like a thing that's not. Here. You sound. This just sounds like literally classic anxiety. Yeah, you just yeah. have future. You have anxiety because yeah. you're worried about the future and you're educated. Hey, Kalila, when I met my wife, uh, she was living with her ex-boyfriend at the time. Nice. Really, Pete. And, Pete. And, Pete. and 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 tell us more. Tell us more. And then, like, how did you guys like? Were you worried that maybe, like, whoa, like this is too soon? Like, does she need time to heal from this relationship? Like, is she, am I her rebound? Didn't think any of that. Should we just clicked and that's it. Took a chance and we we clicked and that's it. But immediately, that's like, oh wow, like living with an ex boyfriend. Where do where do I fit in? And who are you? <clears throat> who are you? But I loved who she was and kept. Kept seeing her, kept talking to her. Did That's you have yeah, any you resentments down the road, like in regards to like, wait, like it must have been shaky up front, like it wasn't at all. That's because the thing. You guys, oh. It was, it wasn't at all, but it, it like at all. Just not be even a open. little bit. Just Pete doesn't open. have resentments. No, Look but at Pete. there wasn't at all. It, that's that's the crazy thing is that you think, oh man. You're, this is the wrong time for you. I was living in New York. She was in San Diego. What? You know, it was. You know. It just didn't. It didn't measure up at all, but then it. But then it did because we had an intense connection, and that's. It could. It could be that way. Wow. Okay, that's hopeful because 
when I'm in therapy, um, what I'm the the theme of it is always you need to be alone. You need to feel good in yourself alone without anything else like in informing your mental state. But sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes. Also, I thought the same thing after my last breakup before right before I met Dave. You I tricked Dave into being with you. <laughs> <laughs> I literally remember thinking like, oh my God, okay, like this is it. This is my time. Like I need to be single for a long time. Like I've been dating these people who are not good choices for me right now. And literally within a month I met Dave. It's like, you know, Sometimes I thought the just same. Don't I have just control over. Yeah, I had the same thoughts and anxieties that you're having now. So that to me makes it seem like, oh, these are universal things you're feeling. Yeah, you know. You're yeah, not and you're alone. not. You guys aren't like worried that like sometimes I worry that I've just always been in relationships that I've never really been single for more than like eight months. Yeah, but okay. So I think the Maybe end last six months. The end of your relationship with Bobby is very similar to like how like the last few, like five years of my relationship have been where it's like you've been together so long that like you're able to like build your own life even though you're still with your partner like I have a very separate fulfilled life without Dave and so like that's just a concern that doesn't isn't worth paying attention to mm. I think yeah does yeah, that make yeah. sense yeah like haven't you you've been with Bobby but you've also haven't you been independent throughout that as well? I have been, but I feel like so much of my identity because we work together, we built this yeah. together is very tied, you know, still tethered to him. Um, I think um, I'm I'm terrified that maybe I don't know how to be alone because I've always just been in relationships that I've convinced myself now that I'm like, no, no, no. Like you need to know what it's truly like to be alone. You do or you don't. Yeah. yeah. You do or you don't. don't it's like, like it. and things change like <laughs> things change like that. Yeah. You can change like that. Things around you can change like that. It's like there's no like there's no point in like predicting a future. It's like there's just no point. It's that's just not, literally yeah. so fun. And you're accurate. stealing and you are alone right now and you're stealing that moment for from yourself worrying about Yeah, I I'm doing. like pushing everything away and sometimes I see these openings of like this person's incredible but I'm like ah then I'll like almost like invalidate my own feelings about it and then then say something along the lines of yeah I'll probably just fuck them or something like that but why don't you just be curious the way you said you're right you're right but I think that I need to be curious with myself rather than be so like judging like I think you need to do mushrooms I think I do oh my god we gotta do mushrooms I felt so like after doing mushrooms and acid, like I felt like I really had gotten like very self conscious. Like, and I got, I'd gone into like old habits of really being self conscious about like what other people think of me and all that stuff. And then I was just like, what is the fucking point of that? It's such a waste of time. And you're just like robbing yourself and the people that really fuck with you of just being carefree and just doing what you want and just being your own thing. Another thing that's been helping me lately is like, applying to kind of anxiety stuff is, oh, Esther, like you just have to think about the day in front of you. Yeah. Like I really try, and it's not easy. I'm always like, even while we're sitting here, I'm like, oh my God, Monday I have to do this. But like, I try really hard to go to that place where I'm like, it's just about today. I just, just what am I, what's today? What's right now? Because like Annie said so accurately, everything can change. And I'm the kind of person where like, dude, I if I, taste a meal if I try a new drink and I like it I'm like okay I need to order five cases of it because I'm gonna drink it every day but I'm obsessed with it and then it's like well in three days you're gonna be sick of it so why did I plan for needing it like yeah, didn't you buy like 30 berries boot camp classes that a hundred and <laughs> they would not exchange them for smoothie points and it was a waste of money but like that's a th- that is exactly a habit of mine like if I like something I have to like cling to it so tightly and like have it it's like addiction m- mindset or whatever but I think that just applies to like, everything's gonna change. You're gonna be different tomorrow. Yeah. And everything tastes more delicious in scarcity. It's like, I learned that from when I bought like, like three pounds of seaweed salad from Costco once. (laughs) (laughs) Or those seaweed, seaweed those seaweed, like that Carlos's main source of, (laughs) of calories. Like those are like, I ate so many of those one time that I 
I had to take like 10 years off from them. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. I need decades I'm off. Like, oh, Dude, that's what I do. It's with- like songs. When you listen to a song over yeah. and over like, Wait, oh, I, I made myself different. allergic to spinach because I ate it three times a spinach? day, every day, spinach. I can't mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. chai mm-hmm. tea. I had chai tea. When I just first discovered chai tea the year I moved to LA, I had it every day. I bought chai tea lotion, chai tea <laughs> perfume. And now I, I'm still off of it. Somebody didn't see Hassan Minaj's special. It's just chai. Chai means tea. Oh. He's like, you guys are saying tea, tea. That's like when you say <laughs> ahi tuna, it's just ahi. Oh, fuck. I did not know that. Yeah. Ahi is just means tuna. Now Educational I want sushi. comedy special. <laughs> Carlos. Cool. Get us sushi. He gets to, po- to Sugarfish. No, y'all had enough food for the weekend. He's going very <laughs> y'all to us today. He's been yalling us all day. He's watching Texas stuff. Oh, he's watching football on the job. I'm watching football. He's football. been watching football. He's either throwing stuff at us, yelling at oh, us. Oh, that's why he's football. in a... <laughs> I've had a headache this whole time. I've been hungry for most of it until I ate. And I've been watching football. And there were no beers when I kept checking. Oh, my God. He's an alcoholic. <laughs> I need drugs to be around your ass. <laughs> her ass? Just her oh, ass? I know, because it gets him horny. <laughs> I genuinely think this is the new look for you. Oh my god, I do. I love being like it's masculine. hardware chic. I love masculine. It's good because you're so little. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's so weird. You got like actually hot. Wait, Carlos is attracted <laughs> to me in the vest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it ruins like, your friendship. <laughs> so many twists no, and turns. Definitely in this. like a lesbian vibe. Cool. But I'm so glad you're not one of those girls that's like, oh, I'm gay all of a sudden. She is. <laughs> she's it's not all of a exactly sudden. exactly what she is. I don't buy it. She's a pick me lesbian. Yeah. There you go. I am whatever I want to be. You guys, yes. it's, it's time to go home. Yeah. <laughs> I miss my spot. I want to go home. We need to go. Yeah, home. this is not Pete. Um, this is happening on your watch. <laughs> Pete, how did you let this happen? Hey, it's all good. Was this a good episode? We got so serious. It was so cute. Because Esther fake got mad at me. About- what does that matter? It's a joke. It's a joke. But I think something is in the air. What, that we could do another episode? I, you know what? I did put something in the air. Sorry. It worked. It worked. worked. It worked. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Are you feeling feelings? No, it's like... Why'd you say it's okay? Feelings? <laughs> I didn't say it. Like, I'm like doing... I didn't say it like, like that. Your mannerisms. It doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it did! <laughs> Crazy. Everyone's fucking delirious at this point. This is it's so okay. The episode to cut the cause is... Saw it. What is happening? Cut. I'm so wait. Okay, horny. I'll sign us up. Okay, sign us up. Sign us up. Sign us out. Oh no! For what? No. Schindler's List? No. <laughs> <laughs> Slugs. Thank you so much. We've been through like heartbreak, Holocaust. There were tears. We uh, uh, violence. Violence. We were literally had a drive by assault. Throwing. Slugs, Food. thank you so much. You are so messed up mentally if you like this. And thank you for that. We, we love, love you. you. We are connected. We are all the same. We are all fucking flawed. On the fucking road. Yes. We will see you guys. See you next week for an all new episode. We're going to get this bitch to go on the road with us too. Thank you. Thank you.